Doctor, are we live? Yes, sir, we're live. Just let me confirm and I'll start. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, we are here post CAT. And the CAT has got over. Now the next exam that comes up, the next important exam that is coming up is SNAP exam. So we're looking at preparing for the SNAP exam, how, what, where, what, uh, different ways and different things to go about it. Now, I will just start with just giving you a brief regarding the SNAP examination and then the students or faculty from SCMHRD will continue with regards to the whole session. Now, um, SNAP is a very different exam as compared to the CAT. The CAT was a very slow based, thinking based examination. SNAP is a speed based exam, like a one hour you start and you end it as such. So since the exam is different, the preparation also becomes a little different. In a sense, like uh, in a CAT is more of thinking exam, you have to go slow, think and try to answer in the in a CAT. In a SNAP, you don't have time to think. So you're familiar with a question will help you to solve faster. So when you get a question, you need to be familiar and moment you're familiar, you'll be able to solve things faster. So automatically practice does help. Okay, the more you practice, the better it is. Second thing that is important as far as SNAP is a strategy in the way you write the examination. Right? You have uh, three sections which are there um, and uh, based on the three sections, uh, you need to be able to plan and um, write the section. So how you start, what you start will make a difference in a sense. Do you start with a verbal? Do you start with a font or do you start with logic? How do you start the section will make a difference with regards to so experiment. So my suggestion is in the next whatever 10 days, at least write one mock every day, uh, experiment with the mock, find out what works for you, what does not work for you, so that you are comfortable, you know what is comfortable. The idea basically is to pick up all the easy questions and solve and skip anything which is, or I mean, take for a second or anything which is moderate and leave a difficult sums. Technically, if you're looking at top colleges like SIBM and SCMHRD, you need to be able to solve almost all the questions. But that doesn't mean that you get stuck up with a difficult question. I mean, if you find any question difficult, keep it for the second round. Don't get into that whole headstrong thing that I have to solve all questions. You can always come back to a question. That's what people make a mistake. They tend to try to solve all questions in the first round. And then what happens is uh, a lot of time is wasted and they end up not solving, completing the paper. The first thing is to try to complete all the easy questions and come back to the moderate question. But all the strategy will come basically based on uh, you know your experiment and your practice that you do with the more one more important aspect about snap is the logic section the logic section is completely different from cat if you're prepared for cat then the logic for snap becomes very different so in that case be aware of the logic section a different type of question practice logic questions because a lot of people waste a lot of time in logic you normally when you go for the exam you see a logic question you should be aware that how long will you take to solve and whether you'll get it correct the advantage of logic section vis a vis um, verbal is you're more accurate in the logic section but yes the problem is also it takes more time so you need to identify logic question which one takes more time and which one takes less time but ensure that you practice enough of logic so that you're comfortable with a section i'll anyway have more sessions with you um, right now i'll hand over the whole session back to smhrd and um, they will continue with the session right you can start uh, Tushar, Thank you so uh, much, sir. Thank I you. think Mayank will start with uh, introducing them and then maybe yeah. Mayank, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. So, uh, as sir mentioned, today we have with us Tushar, Shikwali, and Mayank from SCMHRD. And uh, as we all know, SCMHRD is one of the top B schools in India and it admits uh, students to the SNAP exam. So, today we have with us Tushar and team to guide us regarding the different aspects of giving the SNAP entrance exam and also tell us more about the SEM entry. So over to you, Tushar. Yeah, thank you so much, Mag. I think Patrick sir has already covered everything. Uh, not much left for us to cover. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tushar. Uh, I'm currently pursuing my MBA in Business Analytics from SEM HRD Pune. And I scored a 99.25 percentile in my SNAP last year. Hi everyone, I am Shifali Kaushik and I'm pursuing my MBA in sales and marketing and I scored a 99.32 percentile in my SNAP last year. Hi everybody, my name is Mehek Sachdeva and I'm pursuing my MBA in sales and marketing from SCMHRD. 
I scored a 99.54 percentile in SNAP last year. Thank you so much, Mac. Uh, so guys, the agenda of, this, of today's session is going to be basically we'll run you through some important dates uh, with respect to SNAP and the further processes. Uh, we'll give you section by steps. So it's uh, tips with respect to verbal, uh, tips with respect to LR, uh, tips with respect to quant. We'll be having a mini quiz as well. Um, and we'll be giving out some goodies uh, based on that quiz. And then we'll be telling you something about our college and why you should join SMHRD and why our college would be the best choice for you. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Mac. Mac, over to you. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so we'll go on further with the PPT now. Um, we have some important dates for you, first of all. So as you all know that 9th December is the last day to register for SMHRD. So with you all must be thorough with your SNAP registrations now. Now is the time to fill in the colleges. Um, 9th December is the last date. Um, there's 1,000 per course for SCMHRD and we have three courses, which we'll be covering uh, in the further slides as well. Um, the SNAP test followed our 10th, 17th and 22nd December. There are three attempts. So whatever attempts you ha must have been registered by now, um, all the best to you. We'll be giving you tips for them as well. Um, the results will be out on 10th January, that is your um, scores as well as your percentile. And on 17th January, the shortlist for SCMHRD. So all of you who have registered and will be registering of this after the session will receive their SCMHRD shortlist once you get the um, required percentile and scores. And uh, uh, from 27th January, your GPI process will be beginning. Um, the process will and what the process will be about, what the weightage will be, will be covered in the next slides as well. So stay tuned for the session. Yeah, so um, this is just a snippet of how your SNAP registration must have looked like. You must have selected your slots and um, the test is further. So um, this snippet is just to show that this is how your SNAP registration looked like. But in the next slide, we'll show you how SMHRD registration looks like and how it is different from your SNAP registration. So can you move to the next slide? Yeah. So as you can see, um, this is the page where you can register for SMHRD after your SNAP registration. We have three courses in SMHRD, MBA core, which is the first choice if you can see here in the box. The second course is MBA infrastructure development and management. And the third is MBA business analytics. So these are the three courses. All of them have different eligibilities. If you have any questions regarding the eligibility, you can definitely ask us in the chat box. We'll be happy to answer. Moreover, for any queries, you can also uh, mail us at our different mail IDs, which will be listed at the end of the session as well, or our social media handles. And apart from that, you can also go on to the website scmhrt.ed for any further information. Right. So as we all know that the exam is just around the corner in the next 10 days, we have some tips for you for all the three sections based on our experiences as to what helped us for 99 percentile. Coming to general English. So the first tip that I'd like to give you all is just focus on understanding how figures of speech are. So a lot of times questions related to different figures of speech are asked. So you first of all must know the different types of figures of speech. Only then you will be able to apply the concepts in practice. You also should brush up your grammar rules like tenses and punctuations. Since these are uh, some of the basic questions that are asked. So you must have done these uh, topics in your uh, 8 to 10 standard. You just need to brush up on them and maybe apply, learn to apply them and practice them more. You, you must have um, already prepared uh, for the verbal ability section for other entrances as well. And you need to continue with the same and just practice para jumbles and paragraph completion by logical arrangement and spotting transitional phases. Apart from that, one thing that really helped me and I have written the same here is creating flash flashcards for various things. Now, we all know that idioms is one thing that is just very, very long and it's very difficult to remember. So one thing that can really help you is flashcards. You can write one idiom on one side of a flashcard and then just keep it for your revision at the last day just before your exam. That can help you with a very quick review. Um, Another tip that I had in my mind was that you can um, familiarize yourself with root words, prefixes, suffixes, that and synonyms and antonyms, which we also have in our uh, ready reckoner which is a one-shot snap compendium we'll be providing you after the session. So these were some tips that helped me with general English per se as a section. 
this is this section can be one of your quickest sections so that you can save time on other uh, sections of the exam okay coming to analytical and logical reasoning so this question section has 25 questions and as per the strength this section is the uh, most is the section which has the most number of questions um the first tip that i'd like to give you is just pre read all the questions that are there so that you can actually understand what the question is asking so there are a lot of different type of questions like strengthening or weakening the argument or cause and effect or statement argument so you need to understand as to what the um, section is actually or the question is actually asking you practice problems with set relationships like intersections unions and complements so these are some prerequisites which are which form the basics of questions and if you do not know the concept whole altogether you will not be able to answer the question or understand the question further and hence you will not be able to answer so it's very very important that you know the basics beforehand you need to mem memorize any letter associations or number associations for example um, what uh, i used to remember that we used to remember patterns like a is associated with 1 or 26 uh, while solving my coding decoding questions or sequences and series questions so that really helped me put logics in practice just before the paper even began that and that actually helped me save time while solving the questions practicing cause and effect questions uh, was something that also that, that helped me because critical reasoning is something which uh, forms a very major portion of this section so um, cause and effect is also something that you need to practice and focus on looking for signal words like because since therefore can indicate cause and effect and hence can help you as i said understand the whole essence of the question last memorize the key formulas related to leap years days of the week and date calculations so for some specific topics like clocks calendars you need to have your concepts in place like zero days like leap years and the formula associated with clocks so till the time you do not know the whole formula itself you will not be able to solve the question again so it's very necessary that at that time you're not wasting your time uh, memorizing or remembering the formulas the formulas should be on your tips and that one minute per question as per we say should be only reserved for application of those formulas and concepts that you have in mind yeah, uh, so sorry to cut you off there, Mahek. Uh, let's, uh, there are a few questions in chat I think we can take up. So there's a question asking that, are the slots of similar difficulty? Um, so I would like to tell you that it depends on what your strengths are. Uh, it, like for example, in a, slot, in a particular slot, it may so happen that the verbal section was a bit harder. But if the verbal section is something you're very good at, you might not find that slot very difficult. So that varies from person to person and there's no such hard slot or easier slot in SNAP. And another question is asking about the eligibility for infrastructure development and management. Uh, so Mohit, I would like to tell you that if you're coming from an engineering or an architecture background, you need not have any work X. But if you're coming from a non-engineering or non-architecture background, you need to have at least one year of work X in the relevant fields. Only then you'll be eligible for the program. And uh, there's another question asking for some personal tips. Okay. Um, so one thing I used to do is whenever I get the paper, I used to first of all list down the letter to number association at the top of the sheet. And as you know, there are a lot of coding decoding questions that come in SNAP. So this will really help you to you know, increase your speed, boost your speed, and make sure you can solve these questions really quickly. And also I would recommend you to uh, do arrangements very well. So there are some questions in which you have like one arrangement and there are two to three questions off of that arrangement. So if you can tackle these questions really quickly, uh, you'll save a lot of time and boost your score in SNAP. Okay, over to you, Mac. Thank you so much. Thank you for the insights, Tushar. Um, Continuing with the QA section, uh, one of those sections which is um, feared by a lot of people, uh, people specifically non-engineers. So, so, guys, um, it's not a section which is made for engineers. That's our total myth that is there, prevalent. Um, the example is that uh, me and Shafali here are non-engineers and we are here 99% percentileers sitting in front of you. So QA is not one section that you need to fear of. In fact, you should actually practice on your weak areas to convert it into your strength. Coming on to the tips for QA. So the first tip that I'd like to give you is just review all the topics and, and formulae that you have. So by this time, um, since you must be preparing for a lot of entrances at one point, so you should have a formula book with you in hand um, if not then obviously we will be providing you with the ready reckoner but if you do have it then great you just revise your formula and whatever important things you have written before your exam because 
as i said it's a speed based exam you cannot actually remember your formula at the end moment you need to have it on your tips second is identify the high weightage areas and allocate four time to questions from those topics so you know that area is like um, arithmetic and algebra are probably areas where you should focus on or you can focus on so that it can cover a lot of topics in arithmetic you have tsd time and work you have um, percentages so it covers a lot of portions similarly um, in your algebra as well you have inequalities quadratic equations so by syllabus per se these topics these areas cover a lot of topics so you should um, definitely give higher weightage to them when you're revising and that does not mean that you should not revise other areas other areas are important as well so one thing that really helped me personally with quants is that you need to stay calm and you need to identify which questions are to be skipped and which questions are to you have to do at that per moment so there is an option called mark for review which you can use in your exam so if there is a question that you think you are not very sure about if you want to solve right now or if the topic is very new to you or the application is new to you you can uh, at that moment mark for review that question and skip that question for now and move on to the other questions so that so that you do not miss on the doable questions specifically in quants review your key geometric concepts specifically related to triangle circle so as, as we talked about um, algebra and um your arithmetic right now you also need to focus on geometry um your areas mensuration and everything related to quadrilaterals trapeziums that should be on your tips as i say enhance efficiency by using approximations so um them for specifically areas like um, time and work you can use approximations like by assuming as to if there's a specific uh, amount or days of work or number of workers that helps you move on to the calculation quicker and faster in the last strategically eliminate unlikely choices so um since it's an mcq based exam one thing that you can use to your advantage is use of options so that is something that is really really preferred in algebra where you can use options um like in quadratic equations when there are questions of finding roots and if there are choices given you can use the options to um, strategically eliminate and then come to the answer instead of directly going on to solve the question Yes, I would like to mention something here. Can we go back to the slide, please? Yeah. So, as Meek mentioned, that since I am also from a commerce background, I really feared the quantitative ability this section as a whole. Like there was not even a single topic that I was really confident about. And I and at the end of the exam, uh, it is all about how you strategize strategize your exam, right? You have to understand what topics you are very strong at and which sections to play. Uh, in which way, right? So I so I uh, planned my exam in such a way that it did not. Uh, give a lot of importance to the quantitative ability section since i was very comfortable with the other ones and i put this section in the end and i gave uh, most of my time and most of my energy to the other sections so i maximized my score this way and since uh, there were a specific topic that i was a little comfortable with i identified those questions first and i solved them so i did not even touch this questions which i was very sure that i was not uh, that i was not even being able to solve right so this is how you have to uh, you know plan your or at this point since it is the last lap to snap you would have been uh, given at least a few marks so you would be comfortable which topics you're comfortable with and which uh, you know a, a section and which order to attempt or examine so by now you should be in a way be aware of, of how your strategy is going to be in the exam and if you're still not aware this is you know the accurate or the best time to understand how you're going to attempt the exam yeah thank you so much shafali uh, so there's a question asking which section should uh, should we attempt first so i think shafali has already covered that um, i think it depends on your preferences and your strengths so personally verbal was my strongest section and just like shafali i used to attempt verbal first and if you find your bit, bit uh, you know uh, slow in quants i think you should save that for the last so personally what happened is for me i used to find there are some lr questions that were really hard uh, i used to take a lot of time to solve those questions basically so what i used to do is i used to first solve lr uh, so solve va and then i used to go on to quants and in quants i had very specific topics that i was very good at So what I used to do is I used to scan through the paper and see these topics. And whenever these topics showed up, I used to solve those questions. 
leave the rest because obviously you don't need to attempt each and every question in Snap. Uh, as you might be knowing, there's a point to find negative marking for every wrong answer you give. So don't attempt every question. It's not a guesswork game. But yes, you can make some smart guesses. As Mayak said, use the options and uh, make some uh, smart guesses that will help you boost your score. And then uh, at the end, I used to take the LR section. So uh, that used to look, you know, I still feel like, okay, I'm done with two sections and just one section remaining. So it would calm me down a bit. And, uh, you know, that helps you when you're uh, in the exam. Plus, there's only 60 minutes for 60 questions, right? And you cannot solve each and every question under 60 seconds. So you have to plan which question to attempt and which not to. So play according to your strengths. That is something I really emphasize upon. Correct, correct. That's so right, Shifani. And there's another question from Siddharth asking, uh, any tips on increasing speed in QA and LR? I think there's no uh, specific tip as such, uh, Siddharth. Uh, the more you practice, the better you get, the faster you get. Um, so in the coming 10 days, I would recommend you to solve anywhere between three to five mocks. And, um, you know, just be very good at the topics you're good at. So focus on your strengths, as Shefali said, and you should know which question to leave. So, uh, for example, um, if you're really good at, suppose, time and work, and you, you, you're you very confident you can solve each and every question in time and work. But then that happens that, uh, you know, in the, in the exam, a very hard question from time and work comes and you realize it's very hard. So don't take it on your ego. Just let it go because some questions are made to slow you down. Uh, it's very important to know which question not to solve in order to maximize the score in SNAP as it's a speed-based exam. Okay, shall we move ahead? Any more tips, Shafali? I guess we have covered more than enough for now, Tushar. Great, Let's great, go on. great. Okay. Um, so now that we've given you a ton of tips for each and every section, uh, let's put it to the test. Uh, we have a small quiz planned out for you and we'll be giving out some vouchers at the end of, end of the session uh, for the winners, for the top two, basically. Uh, so get out your mobile phone, scan the QR code on the screen and you have 10 minutes, uh, 10 questions. So basically it's just like Snap. It's a mini uh, Snap mock uh, right here for all of you. And there's no negative marking in this exam. So do attempt each and every question. And uh, yes, uh, keep in mind all the tips we gave you right now. And let's see who does best. Okay. And if any of you are having facing some difficulties in scanning, we have also pasted the link for the uh, quiz in the chat. You can just click on the link and attempt the quiz. Yeah. And the level of difficulty in this quiz is going to, you know, remain similar throughout the uh, exam also and all three slots in a way. So uh, you, this is a, this will, this is going to, you know, act as a good judge how, where you lie and where your preparation lies at this moment. So attempt it nicely and give your best, all the best. Yes. And so there's another question. What was your one day to snap like? Okay, so on your last day, I would recommend you not to stress much. Don't study much. So uh, we have something very special planned out for all of you. Uh, we have a com one-stop compendium called the Ready Reckoner. So as a part of this document, we'll be having all the formulas from uh, the, from all the different sections planned out. We'll be having some solid examples. And also we'll be having two free mocks for you. Uh, in that same document. So I would recommend you in the very last day to snap, just go through this document, glance through the formulas. Um, if you, you know, if you think that I, I want to solve one question from a particular uh, topic, just do that. Don't stress much. I would not recommend you to give any mocks on the last day. Relax and take ample sleep before you go to your exam. Uh, that will make sure, you know, you're at your best before you attempt the paper. Yeah, and as Tushar already mentioned about the ready reckoner, we have also included tips for each and every section on, and the topics which can be asked in the logical reasoning section. So maybe you can just go through the tips and the type of questions that can be asked instead of just, you know, putting a lot of effort into solving each and every question. So you need to be, you know, your mind needs to be at peace. You need to be feeling calm and just relax on the last day. That is what I did. And that worked for me, I guess. It definitely did, Shifali. Yeah, you're sitting here in front of the students. Okay. Um, someone's asking who will get the document. So to get the document, you have to attend the quiz. Uh, that's paramount because that's how we get your email IDs. And the, within the next 24 hours, we'll be mailing the document to you. And trust me, guys, the document is really helpful. I was in your position last year and it really helped me to, you know, boost my score in Snap. And we're, and we're also very active on our social media handles. So uh, we'll be posting the links of our socials uh, in the chat box in the meanwhile. And you can go through, uh, you know, our Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and our YouTube as well. And you can find different types of campaigns that are being run in our, uh, you know, uh, 
on our pages. And uh, there's also weekly campaigns that we run. Uh, there's Word Up, there's uh, Logical Emethist, and there's also the Formula of the Week, wherein we uh, post regular type of questions that can be asked in the exam so this is this that's like a you know practice session for you know once a week we post a post and you can just go through the type of question that can be asked and you can just brush up on the same right so this is something i did as an addition uh, at the end of the day i just went to all the types of questions that can be asked so you can just go through our socials maybe and you can find different types of questions uh, on the same okay so can you Put it in the chat. How you how are you finding the quiz? Is it, is it easy? Is it hard? Uh, how many of you are done already? I can't see anybody who's already submitted. Okay. We're four minutes into the quiz. Six more minutes left, guys. Um, okay. Uh, Mansi is asking, are there any sectional cutoffs? No, there's no sectional cutoff in Snap. Mansi, you, uh, you can be rest assured about that. And also you can toggle between sections. So uh, there's no hard and fast rule that you have to complete one section and then go to the next. You can always toggle between sections and, you know, as Patrick sir said at the head of the uh, meet, you can, you know, solve the questions around wise. So uh, in the first round, just go through the questions you're really comfortable at, solve them. And then uh, if you're finding some question, maybe uh, that's going to take some more time, leave that for round two, complete a round one, uh, get your definite marks and then go back to round two to solve those questions. If there's another question asking what job, job roles can we expect in sales and marketing? Um, so Joey, you can expect roles like a product manager, strategy consultant, category manager, strategy manager, marketing manager, et cetera. So there are a variety of roles that are uh, offered to you at our college. Um, so yes, I'm sure that will find you your dream job. Um, so adding one more to that, uh, coming from a sales and marketing background myself, so um, one prominent role that you're also offered is management training, where you actually get a chance to try your hand at various um, do functions or domains of sales and marketing. Um, you will uh, actually work in different departments across business functions so that you can see what uh, what fits you the most and based on which you are given a role further. So that is something that also you get to experience while uh, you're having your final placement at SCMHRP. Yes, thank you so much, Mac. Okay, Naman is back here in the chat. He's saying that he's waiting for his document. Uh, yes, Naman will be mailing you the document really soon. Uh, don't worry. And thank you for attending the session again. Not enough insights yesterday, huh? Okay, there's another question asking, how is SMHRD for marketing? Um, so yes, we've covered the roles that you get. Um, so I think there's a notion that SMHRD is a college that is only good for HR. Uh, and that uh, could not be further from the truth, guys, because uh, all our programs are equally good uh, at SCMHRD. And you'd be surprised to know that the average CDC for um, sales and marketing was even higher than that of HR last year. So, yes, all of you peeps for uh, marketing, you're welcome. There's another question um, that, sir, I, can I prepare for font in the next 15 days as last year's snap fonts was tough? I'm getting around 13 LR, LR and VA. Okay. So, uh, uh, first of all, you should be very calm if you are even scoring in 30s. You're in the last 10 days. You can easily boost your score. Um, what you can do is, as some of the tips that we gave here was that um, using the options. So, um, target a certain number of questions. For example, right now, if you're able to do 10 out of the 20 questions that are there in points, you can uh, make your a target for yourself that in the next um, 10 days, you have to increase your attempts to at least 15. So that can help you score more. It's, again, it's not a definite number, but since we specifically want to target quantitative ability, this is something that you can start with. Apart from that, you can also, um, you, as I said, use options and revise your formulae again and again so that you're not wasting any time in remembering the formulae. And then see that if there's a gap in your application of the concept or if there's a gap in uh, actually understanding of the question and then you'll be able to target the section in a much better manner. Thank you so much, Mac. Uh, so guys, last two minutes left for the quiz. I'm getting a lot of responses. Good job. And I can see some pretty high scores. Okay, so all of you who haven't yet submitted, please do submit. Last two minutes remaining after which the form will be closed. 
Okay, a blind traveler saying just getting three to four in quants. Um, that's okay since you're getting thirty in the rest of the sections. I think I think you're in a pretty good position. So what I would suggest to you is maybe pick up two to three more topics that you can cover in the last few days and uh, try to get that number up to maybe seven or eight in quant so that there's no you know super weak section because out of twenty I think eight is not too much to ask for, right? So yes, uh, cover a few more topics and just make sure that, you know, the topics in which you're getting these three to four marks, you're really good at those topics. And on the D-Day, you'll be able to solve questions from these topics. And also to the blind traveler, if you're scoring this low in cons, make sure the other two sections are very strong and you have to maximize your score in those sections. So yeah, work on your strengths. Yeah. yeah. Agreeing on that, SNAP as an exam is one of those exams that um, helps you actually target your strength areas. Because um, it does not have any sectional cutoffs or any sectional time limits. So you can give the exam at your own pace, at your own strengths. And hence, um, for people who are specifically weak in a particular section, this can be of great benefit. Great. So Swati is asking in how many questions should we attempt for 99 percentile? Uh, so there's no such particular uh, correct number of questions, Swati. Uh, it varies on the difficulty level of the paper. As uh, some of you might have heard, SNAP 2022 was a bit harder as compared to the previous years. So that number can uh, vary a bit. But I think uh, somewhere around 45 to 50 good attempts is something you should target for. Um, so without guesses, just good attempts. And yeah, that would um, you know make sure that you score a 99 percent there. Right. Adding on to that, it also depends on your accuracy rate, right? So if you're attend, uh, if you're attempting a very large number of questions, but you're getting half of them wrong, then uh, there's no point, right? Just be sure that there's a good ratio maintained between the number of questions you attempt and the number of questions you're getting right. Okay. So I think we should move ahead, right, guys? I think we've given two minutes extra for the students. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now that you've heard all about SNAP, uh, I'm here to tell you something about our college. What's the big prize at the end of it all? So uh, as you know, we all are from SCMHRD and our college is one of the top 5% B schools in the whole world who are accredited with the prestigious AACSB accreditation. So this is a, a laurel that's bestowed upon colleges who have an industry-oriented curriculum and it shows that, you know, the curriculum at SCMHRD is cutting edge and it will make you ready for the challenges you will be facing in the corporate world. And yes, we have student exchange programs as well in our college. You, you can travel to different countries around the world in your last semester to come uh, for the exchange program. And our, our college, a very special thing about our college is that SCMHRD is a student-run campus. Um, so every, like, for example, we, we are from the admissions and PR team, and we have 14 such committees on campus. We'll be covering uh, these committees in further detail later on. So what this does is that it gives you a good exposure um, to actually run a team, uh, make sure, uh, you know, know how a team works. So um, many of you will be freshers, right? So not everyone is coming from a work ex background. So uh, those who, those of you who are freshers will get a nice exposure on how a team performs, how tasks are done in a team, how do you, you know, uh, uh, chart out the tasks between your team members and things like that. So that's one thing that's um, very unique about our college. And that's something that will, you know, make sure you progress ahead in your career. And uh, coming to the last point, yes, um, I'm not sure if how many of you are aware, but solving case competitions and taking part in case competitions is a very integral part of an MBA journey. Um, so as you can see, we are we, our college secured a very impressive fourth rank in the 2022 Unstop rankings. So Unstop is basically a platform in which a lot of uh, companies host their case competitions and the winners of which get uh, pre-placement offers and pre-placement -pre interviews and um, rewards as such. So it's a very good, um, you know, indicator on the level of students we have at SCMHRD um, with that fourth rank. Okay, moving on ahead. Okay, so this is a roadmap to, to your journey to SCMHRD. As you know, um, in the coming month, your SNAP is going to begin. You'll, have, you'll be having three attempts, as we said earlier on. The first attempt starts on the 10th and the last will be on the 22nd. So SNAP is just 50% of your weightage to SCMHRD, basically. So the other 50% comes from your GEPI. So GEPI is group exercise and personal interaction. So 10% of your weightage, that's like 10 marks, is given to your group exercise in which you will be asked to work as a team and, uh, you know, work towards a common ob objective. It's uh, not like a group discussion. It's not like uh, you are arguing against each other to put your point through. So you'll be given an objective and you'll be asked to work as a team to check your teamwork and communication skills. And uh, you'll be tested on how well you're able to arrive at a, a solution, basically. 
and the personal interaction carries 40% weightage. So yes, um, I think one thing, as um, Heck mentioned earlier on, we are having a campaign called APR Weekly, in which uh, you'll be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be covering news from, from India and around the world. We'll be giving you top five to six headlines every week. So make sure you uh, follow our social media handles and stay up to date. That's something that, you know, will really help you during your personal interaction. So this is not like an interview. It's like, uh, it's more of a thing where the panelist is getting to know who you are as a person. So whatever you have on your CV, uh, you should just be very, very uh, strong at justifying what you did, uh, how you did it and what you learned from it. So it'll be a very friendly conversation um, in which it'll, you know, uh, test who you are as a person and how you fit into the culture of SCMHRD. And after that, as you know, um, on the 17th of January, the merit list for SCMHRD will be released. And I'm hoping to see many of you over at our campus next year. Yeah, I would so, like to add one thing here. Sure, yeah, since so many students have a doubt regarding gap years and their backgrounds not aligning with the, you know, MB expectations. So this is something you should, you know, get it out of your head. Because me, I self, uh, I am from an economic background and I also took a gap year. So I'm maybe a perfect example of how even though your background may not be a very generic one. And even though you might have, you know, have, a, have had a drop year, you can still make it to one of the top B schools in the country. It is just about how you how well you're able to communicate that in the personal interaction round and how we are able to justify the same so just focus on that just uh just do well and just be confident in what you've done i guess that should work for you yes thank you so much Shipali. Uh, so there's a question asking uh what exactly is a case competition uh so a case competition is like um an industry problem is given to you and you have to prepare a prepare a solution on it basically you'll be asked to mostly work in teams of three to four and you'll be given a problem statement and you, you have to go, go through the problem statement do your research extensively um basically data figures and other such trends are expected off of you and you have to prepare a presentation and probably present it in front of some corporates and yes there'll be very good rewards if you are really good at it okay uh, moving on ahead Okay, so something that all of you have been waiting for, I guess, uh, the placement figures at SCMHRD. So as you can see, uh, this, we have a summer placements, right, uh, in uh, in MBA colleges. So for, from our previous year, uh, our highest uh, stipend stood at 4.4 lakhs. That's just for two months. So you can see how high the figures are. And our average uh, stipend stood at 2.52 lakhs. And moving on to the final placements, uh, our highest international CTC was 67.6 lakhs and our highest um, domestic package uh, stood at 25.02 lakhs. The average was 23.71 lakhs and the median stood at 22 lakhs. So I think these are very strong figures and uh, you know it gives you all the more motivation to fill that SCMHRD form. You still have a few more days left. Okay, moving on. So yes, as we said at the top of the presentation, we, uh, the core program is not the only program that SCMHRD offers. We have two more programs, the first of which is business analytics. So this is a program that just started five years ago. And as you can look at the screen and see, um, the figures speak for itself. And you know, if our program is just uh, in five years, it's demonstrating such high figures, like as you see, the highest CTC was 33.61 and the average stood at 22.03. And one figure I would like to get your attention to is the one at the very bottom on the left, the average increase as compared to the last year, that was 38.53%. So that uh, goes to show how much of an increase you should expect in the coming years, right? And it rest assured that, you know, it's a it's a really good course and I, I'll urge you all to apply for it. But there's one caveat, obviously, uh, this program has um, eligibility criteria of minimum two years of work experience. So if, if you don't have a work ex of at least 24 months, you won't be eligible for this course. But uh, for those of you who have more than 24 months of work ex, Yes, you're more than welcome to um, to apply for the BA course. Moving on. Okay, uh, so the last of the three courses we offer is the MBA in Infrastructure Development and Management. So this is a very niche course, as you as I told you at the head of the presentation, that um, uh, you basically need to have uh, a degree in architecture or engineering, or you need to have one year of uh, relevant work ex, basically uh, work ex in the fields of infrastructure or operations, and then you'll be eligible for this course. Um, it's a course that no other college uh, in the country offers. So yes, and you can see the placement figures, uh, the highest CDC, so that's 27 lakhs, and the average was 16.11 lakhs. Okay, moving on. Okay, uh, so one question for all of you. Uh, just look at the screen, scan, scan through the screen, and uh, let us know if you can find your dream recruiter here. Um, just put the name in the chat. Let's uh, let's see who who of you can see the see your favorite recruiter and on the screen.
Okay, Amazon, great. Sakla, great, great. So you can see that um, there are very good names on this uh, list. And this is not a comprehensive list. This is just a select few of our recruiters. The list goes on. It's basically endless. And as you can see, uh, Citibank comes to campus. Cisco comes to campus. Aon. And yes, uh, GSW, ITC, Infosys. These are big names, guys. And as you can see, Hilti. Hilti is a great company for infrastructure development and management. Uh, so if you're hiring for this course, uh, Hilti should be your uh, dream company, I would like to say. Okay, I can see Mars. Great. ABFRL, FedEx, great, great. JPMC, great. That's one very good company for finance. HSBC, yeah, right. We also have companies like Godrej. We also have Google coming to campus. So you can see, and also Bain and Co come into campus. So yes, the list is, um, it's a very star-studded list, basically. Okay, great. I'm not, I can see a lot of responses. Good, thanks for, thanks for being so interactive, guys. Okay, if you have any more questions, I'll just uh, wait for a couple of minutes on this slide so that you can go through all our recruiters and I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Great, Ronak says Goldman Sachs. Okay, okay, Ronak. ABC, great choice. Vipro, nice. Okay, if there are no more questions, I think we can move on. EY, okay, Mohit. IBPS, great, great. Some great choices, guys. Okay, I think we can move on now. Uh, right, uh, Shefali, would you like to take over and, and take yes, our students to work? Yes, thank you right, so much. Thank Shafali. you so much. Thanks, Pushar. So uh, when before I even joined the, you know, uh, MBA school, we had all heard so much about how this culture is so student driven and there's so much happening in the campus and there's a campus life that exists. Now, you know, when I'm living this, I can totally understand and relate how this is so true, because even right now we are a part of the admissions and PR committee. There's so much events with the, uh, that are being conducted and everything is some everything is done by us. So from scratch, there is a lot that we do, right? So there's 14 um, core committees at campus. There's a corporate relations team, admissions and PR team, alumni relations who deal with the alums. There's Neve. We organize such big fests throughout the year. And there's a lot of things that are happening throughout the year. There's media and PR. There's Samat for Cell also, which uh, mainly works for the, you know, CSR activities, tree, tree plantation, and also, you know, educating the underprivileged and helping them. There's guest lecture team. There's infrastructure committee, uh, mainly dedicated towards the IDM, uh, IDM course. There's scope committee. There's econ cell, entrepreneurship and consulting cell. There's cultural committee, management. There's uh, a lot more. There's sports also so there's there's a balance that is maintained right so you so once you're uh, academically aligned there's a lot of co-curricular and a lot of stakeholder management that you learn on the campus so there's throughout the year there's a lot happening in campus and there's a lot less time to even think that okay there's no personal growth happening along with the cats there's a lot of things that you're focusing on so there's 360 degrees you're uh, you know focusing at a lot of things. So this is something that actually makes up a college and the MBA life. This is something that I've learned once I've joined. Yeah, moving on. So bringing a little bit of our campus to you, you know, uh, so here you can see there's the uh, outer wall of our auditorium. This is a very famous wall, apparently. We all stand in front of it and get our pictures clicked. We have a big, you know, uh, play area. We, there's a basketball court. There's a badminton area. We have the TT table. There's gymnasium. There's, uh, there's a lot of, you know, uh, emphasis on sports. So we have a lot of things covered. Uh, below is the auditorium. We have Simbi Eat. So all of the Symbiasis colleges have Simbi Eat, which is our uh, common canteen. We also have Nest Cafe, so uh, at the uh, so whenever we're, uh, we're working late night or we're studying late, there's Nest Cafe that is open, and we come here and we have Maggie and iced tea. So this is something uh, that we really enjoy on an everyday basis. We also have a juice center. We have big classrooms, as you can see. So our campus is really big and really happening. So this is something we enjoy on a on an everyday basis, right? And the yeah. chicken biryani from Simbi it is really good, right? I just love it. <laughs> yeah, this is something we enjoy. Really yeah. enjoy. Yeah, moving on. 
So as I earlier also mentioned, there are several events and campaigns that we run throughout the year. Being a part of the admissions committee, um, there are several events that we conducted this year also. So the first picture shows the um, uh, YouTube life of our uh, event aspirant outreach, right, which was AOD, when we also conducted YouTube lives and or online as well as offline. There's also Rookie, which is actually currently which is going on. So it was actually a month long event. Every day we posted um, six, um, you know, six question stories or quizzes wherein the aspirants could participate and there was also an opportunity to win prizes for the same. And uh, I'll come to Rookie once I'm done with the events in the campaign slides, right? So there's Stratagem, there's Word Up, there's MBA Jam, the event we're currently, you know, conducting, there's Zeal. These are uh, some case competitions as well as some, you know, engaging events that we conduct throughout the year. You can uh, visit our um, social media handles for the same. There's Formula of the Week, as I personally also mentioned. And right now, I believe Stress Buster Stories and 99% Tyler Clubs are two some very important campaigns that we are running since it is a very, you know, a hectic time for students. So we can, uh, you know, we... Um, you know, cover stories of our students who had 99 percentiles or who even, you know, converted SMHRDs uh, and how they, you know, manage stress in this last time. And also some testimonials of the 99 percentilers in our campus. So you can head over to our, you know, social media pages and listen to their own personal testimonials for the same. Mohit Kumar is asking about the mess food. Uh, yes, Mohit, <laughs> as someone who's been through, uh, you know, hostel life before, uh, not from this college, the mess food here is really great as compared to some of the other colleges. And yes, uh, you you get a good variety of stuff to eat all through the week. And uh, that will make sure you're, you know, happy and healthy to go. Yes, that is one something I can vouch like for. Yeah. And one thing I'd like to add here is that all the mess staff wears um, their aprons and gloves and the uh, mess hats, which definitely adds to the hygiene factor so that's one thing that you need not to worry about definitely yes the nice. mess food is outsourced guys it's a company called chartwell um they're the ones who they're basically a five-star company that gets the food here and they cook the food here so you can be rest assured about the hygiene and taste of our mess food right thank you thank you Tushar. thank you Mihik. moving ahead yeah so coming back to our main event which is rookie which is currently being run and it was actually a month long event wherein we posted stories on an everyday basis on our Instagram and Facebook handles. And it was a six uh, question quiz wherein students could attempt the quiz. And we used to, and we actually, it is currently being run. And we uh, declared the results at the end of the week. So um, on the leaderboard, whoever were on the top got some, you know, exciting prizes from us. And we were actually left with the uh, main part of the event, which is the mini quiz and the full length quiz. These two quizzes, are 30 30 minute quiz of 30 questions and 60 minute quiz of 60 questions which are actually based on the snap uh, on the snap exam right and uh, this event is currently being organized in the unstop platform which the shard earlier mentioned what it is and how it works and these two quizzes will be conducted on the 5th and 6th of december the last date for registration for the same is 4th december so i would request you all to just uh, get out your phones and scan the QR code. And if you're unable to do that, we will also put in the link in the chat box. So just scan it and try to register for the same because since it is the last lap of SNAP, this is going to help you a lot. This is going to give you a glimpse of how the exam is going to be. And since these are just 30 and 60 minutes, minute tests, it won't take you a lot of time, right? This is some time you can actually invest in this right now. Plus there's also a good chance of uh, getting exciting prizes from us. And this is something that I would really vouch for at this point. And also, please make sure that the last date of registration is 4th December. So register as soon as possible. And if there's any issue regarding the same or any questions, just, you know, um, you can put in the chat box. Yes, guys, as an aspirant last year, uh, you know that at this point in time, all you're searching for is mocks to give, right? And I used to find it really hard to, you know, find uh, good mocks and basically free mocks at this point in time. So as a, from SCMHRD, we are basically bringing to you two free mocks, one half snap mock and one full length snap mock. And I think there's nothing to lose because uh, an added surprise, we're giving you uh, cash prizes worth rupees 12,000 uh, for the top three winners of these quizzes. So yes, that's all the more reason to register right now and give the quiz when it opens. And wishing you all the best for uh, Rookie 8.0. Yes, I hope you all are registering for the same right now. If you have yes, any questions regarding the same. Yeah, I can already see some people have registered. Great. Tarun has registered. Mohit has registered. Great. All of you, I want all of you to register right now, guys. 
do not delay this. Okay, there's a question from Swati asking, does MBA and MBA BA require work experience for commerce students? Uh, no, Swati, the uh, MBA core program does not require any work ex. Uh, we have almost 50% or even more than 50% freshers uh, for the MBA core program. So you don't need any work ex for it. Uh, but for BA, uh, be it any background you're coming from, you need a work ex of at least two years. Tarun has a question regarding how is life at SCMHR so MBA life in general, it's not just specific to SCMHRD, is full of thrill. There's a lot of learning involved. I can speak for at SCMHRD because since our campus it, uh, is located at a very, you know, it's, a, it's the, location, the location is really good. You have a lot of things to explore around. There's, the Pune is a beautiful city. The, the weather is beautiful. Plus, when we talk about SCMHRD in specific and the campus life that we have, you know, you're engaged in so much activities all at once that, there's a lot of thrill involved on an everyday basis. You're learning so much. You're involved in sports, in peace competitions, in committee work, in academics. There's a lot of things that you're doing all at once. So it gives you a lot of stakeholder management skills, a lot of time management, a lot of decision making skills. Everything is involved so much. And anything you would like to add to Shar Mahe? Um, I think one thing I'd like to add is that um, MBA is one of uh, those courses which makes you step out of your comfort zone. And uh, for me, SCMHRD is just one place that uh, makes you have fun while doing that. So that's all I have to say. Uh, yes, and adding to the location point of Shifa, that Shifali said, uh, it, I think it's the perfect location at Anjavadi campus because uh, the street itself, where our college is situated, is quite peaceful. It's very calm. You don't get to hear a lot of road noise. There's no traffic on these roads. But then uh, just 10 minutes away, you have tons of restaurants, tons of places to party. So it's very good. It's like the perfect uh, mix of both your, uh, you know, having a very peaceful college and having a life, good life outside the campus as well. So yes, guys, the campus life is really great here. Um, all the more reason for you to enroll for SCMHRD. Um, I have a question asking, how's the gym and other physical activity? Uh, so as a fitness enthusiast myself, I'd uh, like to say that the gym at SCMHR is really good. It's very well maintained. And yes, you can go on any day. It's open all seven days of the week. And yes, um, no doubts about the gym. The gym is great, guys. And also we have a swimming pool. So all of you guys who are uh, interested in swimming, yes, we have a swimming pool open, open for you all day long. Yeah, thank you, Tushar. So I believe you all must have registered for our event. And if you're facing any issues, if you have any queries regarding the same, you can reach out to us on our socials, on our email, or anywhere, however you want to. I guess we can move on to the next slide. Yes, so uh, you can scan this QR code or you can, you know, uh, type out or you know, just look at our credentials login credentials of the same and uh, these are our socials you can uh, reach out and reach out to us anytime regarding you know the how SCMHRD is and how we're you know dealing with everything all at once so uh, if you have any queries we are happy we would be very happy to cater to them yes um and if you have any query i right now uh, do feel free to ask us and if you have a query coming later on yes you can scan these uh, send the qr code and reach out to us on our socials as shafali said uh, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions and uh, there's a question asking how many programs do we have to register for um so tarun i think that depends on your preferences um I, I know you might have definitely registered for the core program. So depending on your uh, on the eligibility criteria that you meet you can also apply for the ba and idm programs uh, the deadline for all of these courses is the 9th of December. So make sure that you register before that. Okay, we'll be waiting for a couple of minutes uh, for you guys to ask questions. And uh, if there are no more questions, we can uh, close the stream. Okay, so there's a question. Um, what are the opportunities for people with work ex in MBA course? So, uh, SCMHRD has always been a very diversity inclusive campus, right? So, we have a very healthy ratio of freshers as well as people with work experience. So, in terms of the opportunities that um, both of the um, cohorts of people get, it's more or less the same. It's just that people who have work ex uh, do come with a set of views about the industry as compared to freshers but the opportunities that both of the cohorts get is more or less the same itself there's no differentiation with respect to the opportunity
Yeah, Tarun says he really wants to be a part of our committee after he gets dressed in Machadi. Okay, great, Tarun. Uh, would love to have you over as a part of the admissions NPR team. Hope you clear snap with flying colors before that. All the best to you. Yes, so I believe since we're not getting any more questions right now, we can announce the results of the quiz we conducted. Definitely, definitely. Right. So um, the first winner is Akanksha Singh. And the second is Mohit Rathor. So congratulations to both of you. Our team will reach out to you for uh, the prizes that you will be receiving. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, good job. Good job. Yeah. And uh, everyone else, I can see your scores as well. Your scores are really good. Uh, don't be dejected that you your name didn't show up here. Uh, the scores were really uh, neck to neck. And we had to basically filter out using a timestamp who, uh, who gets the prize. So congratulations to all of you. You all have done really well. And keep, keep working hard in the next few days. Um, don't stress much. Uh, don't take any stress. Just um, relax and do as well as you can. And I'm sure you all will uh, do really well in the SNAP exams. And for those of you who have registered for all three slots, you have ample time, right? The last exam was on the 22nd of December. So I think uh, there's no need to, you know, stress up right now. Just do your best and you have ample time to pull off a really good score. A 99 percentile basically in SNAP. Yes, we all will you all the very best for the same do well in the exam stay calm do your best it's, it's stress that you know uh really messes in the end so just stay focused okay all the yes. best guys all the best guys thank you so much for attending the session thank and being so such a lovely audience